Hey guys, my name is Kev here from the Michigan Vacuum Gun Union going over our three-part series, Road to February 22nd. Now, February 22nd is our Battle for the Booster Box Tournament at RAW Hobbies in Livonia, Michigan, where the first place player will get a full 24 packs of Age of Auralis Booster Box. So, you can imagine that going into this tournament, there's going to be some pretty heavy hitting decks and people really gunning for that huge prize pool. So with that, we got a couple new players in town and they've asked me and uh, asked Strimbo and I to really kind of go over how we go about building decks and prepping for a tournament such as February 22nd when the stakes are pretty high. So we thought it'd be a really good time to not only highlight a couple of decks that we're thinking about bringing to the tournament, but really help some of the newer players uh, go over how we build uh, decks. All right. So for me, the first and foremost spot where you start with a deck build is your Bakugan, right? So you have to pick three Bakugan and there is tons and tons of Bakugan to pick through. And now you can pick through personal choices or you can... Um, start really just comparing and looking at stats. And over time, and been playing the game for a year now, what I can say is that a lot of the Bakugan that are really strong in the game right now usually revolve around some sort of core bonus. So because they have these core bonuses, you don't have to play any cards to get those effects and they become very strong. So you will see a lot of the newer decks, uh, HTN, and Power Creep Boys is because they have this incredible core synergy that really strengthens their um, base stats, right? So for me, I really am tapping into that concept. I love playing Hydronoid for his incredible first turn stats. He can get to 1450B or 1400B if he, hand, if he lands on uh, one of the newer Red Fists. So he's uh, been in my decks a lot. I used to I used to run uh, AU Garganoid because he could hit 1350. Now I can hit 1450 uh, and, and I don't have to bring a, a green fist. So I really like him. I knew I wanted him in my deck. And I was looking at um, Power Creep Boys, looking at HTN. Couldn't figure out how what deck I really wanted to play. I love playing both of those decks and I love playing uh, red, white, and blue or red, white, and gold. So I kind of narrowed my search uh, what I wanted and what I came up with is kind of a hybrid of the two. I kind of threw the best things together um, I knew I wanted to play Hydronoid. I knew I wanted to play HTN and I knew I wanted to play Pyrus So from a Red Fist Magic Shield core synergy, I really was left the two options Nobilius Ultra and Dragonoid Ultra which brings a Red Fist a Magic Shield Nobilius Ultra loses a little bit of damage to Drago, but because again that core synergy you bump up in your available B uh, without playing any cards. So that's really where I landed. It's kind of a mashup of the two, two of the bigger uh, big decks in the game right now. And it's a little bit of a hybrid uh, based on things that I enjoy playing um, at tournaments. All right, so those are my three Bakugan. Basically, basic concept is uh, Magic Shield Red Fist Core Synergy. And with that, the cores I'm going to be bringing are two of the new Red Fists. It's plus 200, plus three, uh, minus two on the gear cost. So I do run a couple, I do run some gears, and the minus two gear cost can come in uh, handy uh, at any time, really. So the original Red Fist is a 250 plus three, so I'm sacrificing 50B for the minus two gear cost. And some of the gear can get me right back up there in B. So it's a decent trade-off. I like running two of them. So two of those. And then I do run one of the traditional uh, plus 250 plus three red fists. And then I run one plus six red fist. And the, the plus six red fist is not a red fist I'm looking to land on. But that is a red fist I'm going to be pulling off the field with various core... Uh, core recovery mechanics so uh, it's really out there it's always placed properly so that I know where it's at on the on the field and that I can grab it uh, when I need it but I'm usually not looking to land on it because I'd rather land on the B boosting red fist rather than the plus six all right and then the last two I have in the deck are uh, two magic shields plus 650 uh, there's no other magic shield to play. Uh, you might as well play the top dog, which is the, the plus 650. So I got two of those 
in the deck. Um, the only, uh, there is a little bit of uh, not as many magic shields, so the HTN deck, it revolves around HTN needing magic shields. I am running two, so there is a little bit of a worry on only having two. Um, if they get picked up by other Bakugan or stolen, um, then HTN is a little bit, a little bit soft to that, but um, I'm trading it off because I don't want to run blue this time, and I really want to run Hydranoid, so just a personal preference. From there, when I'm getting into building a deck, I'm really uh, looking at both what I call both end bookends of the deck for me. Um, so for me, the bookends of the deck are my evolutions and my flip cards. So my evolutions, I know how many slots I want to spend on evolutions, and I know how many slots I want to spend on uh, flip cards. So what that does is that creates my bookends, and then that gives me how many cards I have to fill in the middle. All right. So for this deck, start with my evolutions. Um, the first one is super simple. The deck uh, does try to take advantage of the Chaos Titan Nilius concept. So we will um, absolutely run three copies of Chaos Titan Nilius and um, you guys have seen it on plenty of videos, I'm sure. If you're not playing it or have never played it, I highly recommend it. Um, it just simply does absurd things, right? So I can cheat this out super early uh, with like a super song, turn one, set it up for turn two, or you can get it out um, just really cheap with a, you know, one turn early with a song of fire. But uh, when, it's, when it's out, it creates a optional situational awareness for you as a player. So when you roll and you land on a magic shield, it allows you to grab one other core. That core can be your other magic shield, taking you up yet another 650 to, to uh, uh, 2300. So it's 650 plus 650 is 1300 plus 800, and then you get another plus 200 bonus, you're at 2300. So if you need to really come over the top on B, you grab the other magic shield. If you got B locked in, you grab that plus six that's hiding in the field so that you can go up to 18 damage. So you, you really can look at your threat of awareness and you can make the proper choice at the moment in the play of what works for him. And that, that having that option in the, in the deck makes him incredibly powerful. So we absolutely have to run him at a three of, so three, Chaos Titan Nilius is our first cards. The other two I run is I run two Titan Hydronoid Ultras. Um, this card is incredible. So we can, on a Red Fist, we can get up to uh, 2400 or 2450, just absurd numbers. Now again, it's a four cost, so it plays into our, so into our Super Song combination that I'll talk about later. And you can get this stuff out really early and really quick and, and really get going. So two costs, I was running him at three. But uh, the internet can, and my and all my uh, the brawl stars convinced me that three is a little clunky, so I went down to two, and I haven't really felt the missing third one. Uh, one is too dangerous because you could lose it too early. Two's pretty safe, uh, so he's in at two. Now the the Pyrus Nobilius. This would be one if you really like Evo cards. This would be a, maybe a vote for the Dragonoid option versus Nobilius. Dragonoid's Evos are two cost and they come in a lot cheaper, whereas Nobilius is five cost um, and I don't run his evolution. It's just, it's too expensive for the benefit. And so what I usually am doing with Nobilius is he's really there as my best Pyrus option to bring red cards into the deck. And he's probably my target for the gear because gear cannot be removed as of right now. There's like one card to remove it. It's not really that great of a card. And, uh, you can get the, really the same bonus as you could on his Evo with just some gear and it can't get removed. And I didn't spend four co or five costs to get it out there. So pretty good. So that's my one bookend. So uh, that's five slots out of 40. So now I know I have 35 left. And then I go to the other end of the bookend and I know how uh, what I want for my flip count. So flip count for me as most players is usually anywhere from three to uh, eight depending on your play style, if you're playing an aggro deck or you're playing a control deck, or uh, maybe you're playing a high cost deck where you need to put in a couple extra flips to get you through some of those early game turns before your, your combinations and whatnot can get set up. 
So for me in this deck, I am playing six uh, flip cards. The first one is probably one of the most popular flip cards right now, and that is Confuse. So it's a one cost chaos flip card that stops anything holding a red fist and magic shield. Well, I'm bringing four red fists and two magic shields, so if you steal any of mine, I got you stopped. But I'm also countering some of the biggest decks in the game, Power Creep Boys, and the other de other HTN decks that rely on magic shields and red fists. And even if you're not into a combination deck, there's still two of the strongest core types to be able to block against. For one cost, this, this card is online at turn one. If um, I'm not going to win, I can just let the victor go and rely on my flip cards. The next one I run is I really like outsider cards. I always at least like to run two uh, outsider cards, and I like to look at the color combinations that I'm least likely to see, right? So um, there's like going to be a lot of blue at the tournament, so running the blue outsiders cards will be less effective than, say, a color that you maybe won't expect a lot of, right? It's still situational. It still could could miss if you're if they roll the one color that matches your, your outsider flip, but um, I like to run two. So in this case, I decided out of Chaos, Pyrus, and Aurelius, I'm going to run the Aurelius uh, version of the Outsiders card, which is the Age of Aurelius Fierce Charge, three cost stop non-gold. Um, out of the three, I would, least, I would feel that I'm less likely to see uh, gold versus uh, white or red at the tournament is kind of the the call and then the last one this is this is a pure meta choice uh our, one of our well per, pure met, local meta choice on this flip card uh one of the the last tournaments that was won had a helix deck and then the new hitter out of armored alliance is the core hydras which hits 1400 if they land on a plus 500 helix first turn so that beats all the power creep boys at 1350 so 1400 is the new number and it's not a red fist or magic shield it's a helix so with that i'm bringing one dazzle i don't think i've ever played this card before it's complete pure local meta choice and i am because i am scared of the core hydras i've seen it do work uh, multiple times now and so this guy is in there because of all the helix power that i think could be potentially here at this tournament now so basically just chaos card zero stops a helix or stops a background holding helix so pretty straightforward all right from there uh once we get through it uh like i said i start those are my bookends and then what that leaves me is that leaves me a very set amount of cards that i can play um in the middle all right, so now I'm talking about my hero cards, my gear cards, my action cards, my reroll cards, and yes, I I can I count them the different. They are the same. They're both action cards, but I have numbers I like to hit for each of those categories. And then the lastly, I like to uh, bring some what I call utility cards. So for me, uh, action cards are things that are basically your B B modifiers and your damage modifiers. Your utility cards are things that um, manipulate play but don't necessarily um, don't necessarily increase the B or damage so things like um, Sky's Him for example and whatnot so that's not in the deck but that's an example um, Blinding Ink is a utility card it's not uh, a increase or increasing card so to start off we'll just dive into what I have in the middle uh, the first two cards I have are the two heroes I run in the deck um, I run two Shargo Ronin. Uh, I love having a first turn play. I think um, one of the strategies that I have in this deck is to really come out strong in the first three turns and try to really just put the nail in the coffin and make you play from behind right away with really, really big damage. Um, you know, if I'm doing, you know, 8 to 10, 12, 18 damage within the first three turns and you're, you know, pin pricking me with two damage for those same three turns uh you know you're just gonna get you're gonna get ahead of the opponent and and they're gonna be playing from behind uh for a while so that that's kind of the strategy i like to play with it's a little bit uh a little bit more aggressive i would call it but 
um, not pure aggro, um, more mid-range, but I like to I like to just come out swinging is what I like to say. So Shargo Ronin gives me a first turn play if I don't see any of my uh, combo pieces, which I'll explain later. But basically just real simple, uh, one cost, he comes out before you roll, and uh, when you open you get plus 100. I'm, I'm not blue, so I'm not stacked 11 uh, re-rolls, but uh, I usually can get him to hit at least once. Obviously I'm trying to open, but maybe even twice a turn because he does stack every time you open. So it's a really nice uh, buffer for first turn. Gets my Hydronoid up and over the Hydrus, uh, turn one without playing, you know, if I can, if I don't have any other cards in my hand. The next cards I have is I, I carry three gear cards and this is my favorite gear right now. And that is the Glimmering Glaive. So I play three Glimmering Glaive this is a four cost plus 400. And when you play this, you may attach another Baku core from the field. So now let's start talking about uh, absurdity, right? So Chaos Titan Ilias hits, hits a magic shield, grabs another sh uh, core from the field. Glimmering Glaive lands on him. You get another core from the field. You can just really go for all the damage and really get it stacked up. This is also one of my song, uh, super song combo uh, fodder pieces so I can play this and get it out first turn if I get the combination in my opening hand and I can just really really turn on my domination factors turn on turn on my trifecta and really just start everything off uh, running with this uh, with this guy I absolutely love this card and then with the two cost gear reduction you know I'm not even paying four for it this thing can come online as early as turn two without any acceleration well, without any card acceleration, I guess that's still considered acceleration. All right, the next cards we'll go into are my reroll cards. Uh, rerolls. I'm not playing blue, so I don't have the luxury of all the of all the super cheap rerolls. Um, I do, however, have the best rerolls in the game. So with this, I like to operate somewhere around anywhere from like six to eight. If I'm in blue, maybe up to ten rerolls because the blue rerolls have a lot of B boost in it too. So for this deck, I am running uh, eight rerolls, and first three are super simple. Nope, sorry. First two are super simple. They are super fuel, right? So it's it's a reroll card for one cost, but the reality of it is this can turn on the super song combo, which I'll which I'll kind of go into a little bit. But at the end of the day, if you don't have any other options, or even if you don't have the combo in your hand, it's a reroll. And the reality of needing rerolls in the game, even for people who've been playing for a year, is real. I mean, you can get you can get roll blocked, you can get bounced off of the core. Um, sometimes I watch the gameplay video. I was having a terrible day at the tables rolling, uh, so sometimes you just shank a roll, and you need rerolls. So you have you have to pack rerolls, um, and super fuel uh, is one of my reroll options. The next reroll option is is the best reroll in the game, in my opinion. We run three quick fire. Now three quick fire really, it's a zero cost reroll, so it's amazing because you can play it when you're uh, when you have no energy when you're tapped out. But also even if you're not using it as a reroll, you can use it to burn one. And we've all won games where they stop damage count on uh, the last card. They have no cards left in the deck, and you hit them with a quick fire uh, burn for one, and you win the game. With you don't even have to roll, you don't have to get out of the damage phase. Uh, incredible card. Uh, it's just, it's a clutch. It's a staple for red. Uh, if you don't have three, you should have three for sure. So that is uh, the next three rolls. And then lastly, past that, you don't really have a lot of options in red and white for re rolls. Uh, I don't run the the double damaging re roll for red that costs three. Double strike, I think it is. I don't run. I don't run that card. Um, so what I do run is I run three uh, Chaos Blessing. So for two costs, you get a plus four damage. I don't really care about the damage. It's nice when it hits and when it when it applies. Um, it's a it is on par, so that's a good trade. The reality of this is it's a two cost reroll. That's that's literally why it's in the deck. That bumps me up and gets me to eight reroll cards, um, just in case I have a terrible day. <laughs> so. It's in there, um, but plus four does come into play at times too. 
All right, then we get into the uh, the B boosting cards or or the action cards. Uh, so from a damage boosting standpoint, I only run excuse me, I only run the three Chaos Blessing as far as like straight damage booster. Uh, from a boo from a boo from a B boosting standpoint, the first one we have is the. Uh, Hail Crescents, this is one of the new Armored Elite cards. It's a copy of the old card Super Shot, which was way cooler, uh, but I like the, um, like the new logo, so I decided to run this version. But basically, it's just a one cost plus 300 B booster. It's a first turn option if I need it. Gives me another option to get B uh, in my first turn. And it also combos well with the Super Song combos I have because I want to have uh, one cost cards to fill in that uh song of fire five energy so we'll talk about that at the end and then the next one is the absolute staple in white you must have this card in your deck if you're playing chaos you all know what i'm talking about that is three lights courage right so it's the biggest two cost b boost you can have uh for 800 if you're in domination this deck is all about grabbing extra cores with the glaive or with HTN. You should be in. You should be in domination um, at a lot of times in this in this deck. So uh, just staples three of must have it. And then the last one I have for B boosting is one of the new cards, and that is Prism Blast. So I run three. Pr Prism Blast, and again, the reason that I'm running this card is the deck is based on co extra core grabs, so I should always be in Trifecta. So for two cost at plus 700, it's a it's Light Courage's little brother, but you don't necessarily need to have more cores than your opponent, you just need to have three. So where Domination um, sometimes may not trigger, depending on, on your timing, um, trifecta could could because we should be grabbing extra cores. We should be able to get to that third core uh, easy and turn and get this online. So two for seven hundred is kind of how I look at it. Uh, pretty cool card. I like the trifecta deal. All right, last couple cards here. Um, the last two. I'm sorry. I do have two more B boosters. These ones are flex slots. Admittedly, right now. I'm still trying to iron out some of the exact ratios I want for the February 22nd tournament. But I have right now two energy draws. This is just uh, a feel that I might need more B. Um, these might flex out, to be honest with you. Uh, but two cost at 500 is slightly over par. Um, and just in case, like this is this. if I had any iffy slots, it would probably be these two in the deck. Um, just might have some other options. All right, the next cards I have are what I call my utility cards. They're not B boosters. They're just there to do certain things in the deck. And what, I'm ta what am I talking about? I'm talking about the other half of that Super Song combination. And that's really my Song of Fire, right? So for three costs, you get plus five energy. This probably maybe may steal one of those energy draws and go up to go up to three copies of this card versus just two. But uh, the first turn combos that I'm able to pull off in the game are pretty crazy, and I'll explain them, what I keep referencing as my super song. The last three cards in the deck are three one-ofs, and they're pure utility and uh, situational. So the first one is uh, a Wayne. You gotta have a Wayne if you're playing white. Uh, it's basically just, for two costs, you destroy an Evo that wasn't played this turn. Um, you do have to wait a turn till it's online uh, and available, but uh, you don't have to wait till the six cost with the wax. And so it's personal preference on which one is better. Um, but I, I run the I run one copy of Wayne. I was running two for a while, but there's a lot of people playing Armored Alliance stuff that just doesn't need or doesn't have Evos. And so I thought two was a little clunky, and I dropped it down to one. Um, that might be a flex option, but I think I have other, I think one is probably where I'm going to lock that one in at, but you got to have, got to have evolution destruction, especially things like, uh, Lupithion, um, the, the loop guard deck requires and absolutely relies on the evolution. So to be able to knock his, knock his legs out from underneath them and get rid of that evolution is amazing. 
All right, the next one I have, this one, this count might be a little controversial and I'm sure I'll get some comments down below for it, but I'm only currently running one Midas Indius. So the deck can do some pretty, pretty solid damage numbers. And, uh, but it has really amazing B numbers too. So I can just win the fight straight up and not have to convert it over into the, in the damage. Plus Midas Indius is soft to a blinding ink. So you gotta be careful about when you think you're gonna switch the gears and go to Victor uh, on damage and then they blinding ink you and you have no B. So you could be struggling. This happened a couple times. But if I was gonna flex out the other energy draw, it probably would be to bump this up to a two copy. And I'm really toiling between the two options right now, but but Might of Cindius is a uh, is solid Pyrus card right there. And the last card I have, and this is, this is completely situational, but um, I do run one hot potato. And the reason I run this is just because there is so much core, re core reliance in the game. The the core bonuses that are on some of these cards are just insane. Like I said, Hydrus is getting plus four or plus 500 on the Helix. Hydronoid is plus 1000. I'm sure I will see another Hydronoid across the table uh, next weekend. So I run a, one hot potato just to uh, mess with their core strategy. Um, can it be re-rolled and they, and they pick up another core? Yeah, but I'm going to physically make you have to make that roll uh, versus just automatically getting it. So it's just something to screw with them a little bit uh, and see what we can do. But it's always fun when they think, you know, you think they got them or they think you got them locked in and you drop a hot potato on the top of the stack. It resolves first and, you know, they don't re-roll. So... All right, so with that, uh, last thing I'll just go over is really what I'm like talking about on this super song and, and things that I've seen this deck do, uh, which is, is, really, is really pretty nuts. Um, so the, like I said, the goal I have in the deck is I really want to, I really, really want to hit turn one and turn two super hard, and I want to get way, uh, way out in front and just make you play from behind uh, really early. And what I can do is really get any combination of uh, Super Fuel, Song of Fire, and any of my four costs in my opening hand. So any of the Glimmering Glaives, any of the tight, any of the uh, Titan Nilius, or I'm sorry, any of the Titan Hydronoid, or any of the Titan Nilius, right? So. If I get any of this combination and then the Hero, the Chaos Crescents, if I get any of this combination in my first hand, so one of the one of each of these and one of this, I can get this stuff all off online first turn. So in in turn one, hit my reroll, Super Song into Glaive. I'm grabbing another core, so I'm sitting on two cores. I can go Hydronoid, which is who I'm usually batting with first, and I can go super high B numbers, and I can get a really good eight damage on it. So uh, all this can can happen. I've, I've done it a bunch of times, turn one. Uh, you're outside of the Blinding Ink uh, world, so you can't get shut down by Blinding Ink, and you just really come over the top uh, super hard turn one. So the Hail Crescents is really just to fill out the five five cost so I can drop a glaive drop more B drop a uh, an Evo more B if I need it um, or this is this would be all on online turn one and available or you can you want to have any of this to really set up your turn two right so you cannot get the extra core bonuses on Titan Ilias, and I'm usually not rolling Titan Ilias first turn anyway but with the Super Song into Titan Ilias, I am geared up and locked and ready to go for turn two. So I'm usually rolling Hydronoid turn one, Super Song into whatever I can. But if I can Super Song into Titan Ilias, then I've evoed him on turn one, locked and ready to go for turn two. I'm going to grab another core when I hit my Magic Shield, and I'm just going to go nuts from there. So uh, if you can get turn one off or pull, in, pull off this combo... Um, before you get into blinding ink area, uh, when it comes online on turn two, then you're going to be dealing some major damage really early in the game. And if you can get really quickly up and out front, it's kind of the strategy. So, 
But that's what I'm currently playing with. I got a couple little flex spots and trying to figure out my last little bit, uh, last numbers on a couple of those last cards. But uh, I hope you tune in. We will be live streaming our tournament on February 22nd at RAW Hobbies in Livonia, Michigan. Take a look at the channel. Please hit like. Please hit subscribe. Check out Shrimbo's deck uh, for part one and check out the gameplay for part two. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Monty Kev. I'll talk to you later.